Welcome back to the lineup. I'm LJ. I'm Mike. And we have our good friend Devin Marrero on with us. Thanks for joining, brother. Thanks for having me, fellas. Yeah. And where where are you at right now? I'm in uh, Atlanta in the ATL. It's getting nice and hot. It's beautiful. Oh, nice. And you getting ready, uh, staying hot, get ready to get a call. Yeah, man. I'm out here just training, staying ready, you know, just getting ready to sign here soon. You know, that's the plan. Just like last year, just staying ready, working out here at Georgia Tech and going over to J-Hood facility here in, uh, in Atlanta. And then I work my way down home uh, to Miami every now and again to work out at uh, the Boris Court facility there at St. Thomas to do some on-field stuff. But, yeah, man, it's out here staying ready, preparing, and just waiting, man. That's the name of the game. You did the And you did the same thing last year, right? And then joined the Ducks and ultimately got back to – the big leagues i remember we were sitting in the clubhouse and uh watching the mets on tv and fast forward two months later and we see you it was pretty cool yeah man you know the past shoot the past three years i've signed late you know i went to mexico uh covid year and then the following year i was in mexico again and then i signed with the Marlins and got to the biggest with them again um then last year, yeah, you know, I was just at home and Sam Chavis called me to join the Ducks. So to just get some at bats while I waited and join my guy, little little Matt. Hey, when and, Sam says something, you do it. Yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt. And uh, you know, and went up there for about like what was it? I was there for like a month and a half, and then got the call to join the Syracuse Mets, and then got called up several times last year with the Mets, which was a dream come true. That's awesome. Yeah, that must have been amazing, being in New York, stuff like that. Yeah, man, especially for me, you know, I grew up uh, emulating Ray Rodonia as my whole my whole life. You know, he's the one who taught me how to play shortstop. My dad was the one who threw him batting practice, you know, when we were young and hit him ground balls, and I would just stand there and just watch. And, like, I posted on Instagram the other day, like, his highlight reel, and I literally watched that every day <laughs> when I was little, you know, and to, to join the Mets, like, and put that uniform on the same way that he did was, was so, so dope, you know, I – I'm so close with his uh, his kids and stuff, so like them seeing that was pretty cool, and them texting me about it was was awesome. The Ray Ordonez, wow, yeah, throwback dude. Who was Stud. Hey, so he played short? Who played second when that was that? Uh... Edgardo Alfonso yeah, played. Um, they had a squad. Ray Adonis, who else played? I think, I think. And then after that, it was. Uh, what to Alomar played for like a couple of years with him. Yeah. When Ray was there, it was – was it Fonzie at second and, and what, Ray uh, – Robin Ventura at third, I think? And, yeah, and then and uh, John Alden played first. I mean, yeah, and they said that infield core right there, I think they made collectively like four errors the entire season. So, for you right now getting ready, right, especially being a little bit later, are you panicked right now? Like what, what goes through your head? Because LG and I talked about this last time when I had a talk with my agent and that was like in November and he's like, are you still trying to play? I was like, I thought you were calling me with a job. Like then I started to panic, mm -hmm. but like, do you, you've been doing it? You've had this situation for what? Three years. Mm -hmm. You said and yeah. it's all worked out. So like, you, do you have a different approach to how you're training right now? Um, no, man, you know, Same I've, shit. You know I've always prided myself on staying ready. Like, you know, I yeah. take my health very serious. I take my training very seriously, you know, and, you know, I don't panic because the things that I can, con I can control, I have controlled, you know, like I have the best agent in the world and Scott yeah. Boris, you know, um, I trust my training and my development, you know, weightlifting and running and doing all my hitting and all that stuff. And I have so many good people in my corner that are keeping me ready. You know, I have such a good support, you know, my girlfriend supporting me like insane right now. And, you know, I just have good people in my corner, you know, I, you know, I, and I take my mental health very seriously too. And I'm talking to a, a therapist like once a week just to keep my mind right and keep my goals sharp, you know. And, yep. you know, all this stuff is important, man, you know, so that when that phone does ring, I'm not panicking. It's like, oh, man, I didn't do everything that I could, you know. So, yep. yeah, I mean, you know, I've done this before and, you know, and I know that I can still play at the highest level in this mm -hmm. game, you know, because I've showed it the past several years. And, you know, and I know I can still do it, and it's just a matter of puzzles fitting in in the right place, you know, and, you know, taking the right opportunity and not just playing just to play. You know, I want an opportunity where 
I want to get back to the big leagues, not and play to win. You know, like I don't yeah. just don't want to go sign to Mexico and just play and just to get a check. You know, you know, like no doubt. Yeah, and I, and I feel like you've always been that way because um, <clears throat> you were first first round pick, you know, out of college and top prospect. You you went up the ranks pretty fast, and then you know towards the end of your career, you were dealing with. Um, like maybe role playing and 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 stuff like that at the big league level. So I feel like it's. I mean, you could tell me and tell us. I feel like it's so important to keep that like consistent work ethic and mindset to deal with that. Because for me, same situation, kind of you know top prospect going up fast, and then towards the end I was dealing with role playing and it, it kind of made me fizzle out because I didn't know how to handle it. That's um, fair. You know, and, and staying ready is so underrated mm-hmm. because mentally and physically, when you're not in there every single day you start, you know, pressing when you are in there because you want to play the next day, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, for me, yeah, for me, man, I got a, I got a taste of it in college, you know, like my freshman year, I go to Arizona State and, you know, the shortstop at the time was Drew Maggi, who just got called Uh, up to the big leagues, you know, the best guy of all time. The best. Like, legit the best teammate. And, uh, you know, and I come in and this guy was, a stud the previous year, leadoff hitter, you know, for, for ASU. And, you know, and I had to prove myself, right? Like I play every once in a while, like the first couple of weeks, and then I earn my, my spot there for the next three years, you know? And, you know, I just like revert back to that, like during this whole, whole process, my whole career, you know, cause every time I got to the big leagues, I, I was a role player, you know, I only played against lefties when I was in Boston and in Arizona and, you know, with the Marlins, I would get called up a bunch of times, you know, guys got hurt. And then with the Mets, the same thing. Mm-hmm. But for me, man, like I've always just had that mentality, like play to win. And that's one thing that Arizona State taught me. And that's always kept me like here, you know, mm-hmm. like in Boston, when I mean, it was the best time, man. Like we legit showed up and we were like, hey, we're going to come in here and mm-hmm. beat your ass. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's just what we're going to do. That's just, I was just like the culture, you know, and the same thing in Arizona. You know, like we were in first place like the whole year when I was in Arizona. So, you know, like just knowing your role and, you know, yeah, you want to play every day, right? Like that's, that's our, that's our goal, but you know, and you have to be real with yourself. You know, I was playing behind Xander Bogarts, playing behind Rafael Devers, mm. you know, Pedroia, all these studs. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, you know, like, that's tough. To me to think like, hey, I'm going to beat out Xander Bogarts, like, yeah. You know, like I like I want to be part of this team and I want to win and you know I'm gonna do my part and that's the whenever a lefty's starting that day I'm playing third and I do the best I can that day. So would you think that's more like your college, the way you were brought up in college, or did you have somebody kind of help you through those roles when you first got into it? Because it's it's hard to just completely change as I'm the guy, especially in the minor leagues. You're the guy, and then you get up there yeah. and there's a whole new role. You're young. And you're at the so was it was too. it your mindset from all the teaching before, or is there a guy that like helped you on that? I think it's a mindset from from college. You know, I think being a college player, where you know every guy is a guy in college, especially a place mm-hmm. like Arizona State, UConn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone there's a dude, man. Like you're not coming in there like in high school or what. Well, and also, I went to a high school where we had all dudes. Like we had Hosmer and Nieto. Castellanos, like we had a bunch of dudes, so like we all Damn. did our role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were loaded, dude. Damn. Loaded. Was that Mary and Harris? um so yeah, man, but then when I got to Boston, you know, when I got to the big leagues in Boston, and to this day he's one of my good friends, I talked to him a lot, is uh Chris Young. And you know, and he at that point in his career, he was would only play left field against lefties or DH mm-hmm. against lefties and you know, and he was a guy who has 15 plus years in the big right. leagues, you know, and, you know, I picked his brain more than anybody, you know, because, you know, we would look at the same picture to do the same scouting reports, you know, and, yep. you know, the knowledge that he had on the game and how to go about my business. And then, so I had him there in Boston to help me, guide me through, through handling all that. And then in Arizona, I had Gerard Dyson and Descalso, you know, so like I've, I always, well, I was very fortunate to be around teams that wanted to win and then had role players, veteran role players there at the time to help me handle that whole process. Right. Yeah, because like, It's I hard, talk, man. It's hard. It's, it, it depends on the team. It yeah. really does. I was like, just going to say that. If you're on a winning team uh, with that culture and 
and guys that are that are doing it in a professional way, um, it like makes you step your level up. If you're dealing with being a like a role player in that situation on a on a young bat losing team, I, I feel like it would be even harder yeah. to keep that up. Like I remember when I walked in for my debut, we were leaving for Kansas City, right? So I'm I should be excited. I am excited, but I'm also thinking about what do I have to do to prepare for? What's a rookie do going onto a plane? All that like mm-hmm. I'm like Mike, like hey, when do I get the beer? When do like a GD wings? Like what yeah. do I do? He's like, uh-huh. what, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> Let's just win a ball game. That literally that's it. But then yeah. you go to the Cubs when we were terrible, and it's like, hey, rookies, I need the beer. Like it's like. Dude, we're not even focused on winning yeah, at all. Yeah. You know, those guys, when you're on good teams, they can bring the best out of you, but they're, they'll are they teach you the most, I feel like. Yeah. So you got to get when lucky. You, I mean, dude, check the clubhouse when I was in Boston. Oh, the best. Dustin Pejoria, Who's David Ortiz, unbelievable. David Price, Rick Porcello, Chris Sale. You know, like we had – Your boy Mookie was there too, right? Yeah, but we, like, I'm talking like veteran presence. Like we had yeah. veteran – like the best veteran presence like of all time. No doubt. You know, and it's like Chris Young, like, man, I could go on and on, like Hanley. Like we had guys that, hey, man, like when you get here, do what you need to do to get ready and help us win today. That's it. You know, That's and it. like, yeah, we're going to have fun doing it, but let's all do this like the right way and go out there and like focus on winning like purely. You know, yes. like, and then the rest will take care of itself. You know, like, yeah. dude, we had the best time in Boston. You know, and like, on the plane playing cards, like, you know, like that's like where we bonded and did, we did so much stuff together. You know, so it was. I'm very fortunate that I got brought up in that organization mm-hmm. because that organization is first class all the way. No doubt. Yeah, and having the, that veteran presence with a collective, uh, you know. Uh, vision of of what to do and and how to go about things it's got to take the pressure off as well you know coming yeah. up and being in that position you, you know you got all these guys saying don't worry do what you got to do help us win and it's just like that's huge yeah you, know? <laughs> you can sleep at night yeah but when everyone's fighting yeah. for their job on a terrible team like even coaches are fighting for the job that's yeah. where you walk into the locker room you're like <laughs> oh boy like oh boy. well also I, too man like there like we had the veteran president but then Everyone that I came up with through the minor leagues was in the big leagues. Yeah, they like were we were all grown. like there together. We had Mookie, Travis Jackie. Shaw, Bogarts, Vasquez, like Devers, Benatendi. Like we had like a good amount of veterans, but then we had a good amount of like our young core players that right. we were all brothers. Like to this day, Mookie's my my brother. You know, like yeah. it's we're all so close and we still have that bond. That's awesome. Yeah, I was hoping Mookie might send me a bat, like, so if you can make that happen. <laughs> I, got a, I got a wedding coming up, you know what I'm saying? That axe handle? You need that axe handle? <laughs> the axe handle. Uh, no, that's, I, I was lucky to be there for a little bit. Even the coaches were great. Yeah. Everything about the Red Sox. Is that your favorite organization you've been with, you think? Well, my favorite org was Boston. Yeah. For, okay. for sure, because – I mean, they like you just had that that team that drafts you. You just had that special bond to them, you know. And you know, you grind it through every level together with those guys, and then you get to the big with them. So, but then the the winning history in Boston is, you know, it's like Boston Yankees Dodgers. You know, those are like the three meccas. Yeah. I got to be in one of them, you know. So the definitely fans, Boston, the, the but they all were good, man. Mets were great. Marlins were great. Arizona was great because the same group from Boston was in Arizona when I was there. So, you know, I've, I've been lucky. I've been part of four great organizations in, in my career. Yeah, Fenway something. I, I remember when we played there, we were up by like nine runs in the big pop – or Pajoya got a hit, big poppy got a hit. I legit thought we were losing. I was like, <laughs> dude, what? We're Fresh up by nine nuts, with dude. like with two outs left. That's it. I really – I was like legit nervous. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I got to lock in, but that's, Dude, that's fun when, when they're going when it's well Wednesday, a day game at one o'clock on Wednesday, oh, it's sold party. out. You're like, you guys <laughs> don't work. What's going on? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nuts. The city loves it. Yeah, Amazing yeah. fans. There. It's a special city for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you got any war stories for us? You got any, um, anything that, cra- anything crazy that's happened to you? Something funny, uh, at the big leagues. Um, oh, I love or minor leagues. Think, man. Oh, playing 
probably the craziest story was, you know, we're in Chicago. We have an off day. We get there the day before. So about 12 of us go out to eat and, and have dinner there in Chicago. And this place is known for the spicy roll. The goat, the, they have, it's called the ghost pepper roll, but it's like a roulette. So they put 12 pieces of sushi and only two of them have the ghost pepper in it. So you spin the wheel and everyone picks it up and then you see who gets absolutely crushed. That's great. And dude, dude, it was awesome. And then we're all sitting there, dude, and it's hilarious because we're all like eating it slowly and we're like, man, I think I have it, you know? Cause it's yeah. like, it's, yeah, yeah. you know, like everyone's like, no, I think I have it. And then you just see the two people who have it just sitting there like <laughs> miserable. Who got it? I think it was, it was Brock. Brock uh, got perfect guy for it. Yeah. And then I forget who else got it. One of the pitchers, I think. And, so we're all just sitting there, dude. There's like we got it for like appetizers. We're like, dude, we're just gonna knock this out <laughs> right out of the gate. And you know, the night goes on and and dinner's about to be done. And we're like, you know what? Let's all just try this ghost pepper roll. And we're like, bro, come on, dude. I'm not a, like a spicy guy. I was oh. like, I dodged the bullet, I'm done. And just we're all just like, all right, screw it. So we all had a ghost pepper. And we all eat it, and dude, we're all miserable. <laughs> Like miserable. We're showing up the next day. Like I'm pretty sure the training staff ran out of Pepto Bismol because we were <laughs> like screwed. That so we, it's horrible. Chris Sale for the first time facing the the White Sox, and that day is the day I hit the two homers in the game, and we hit like I want to say like seven homers as a team. Like we just went on. So a you went back there. You ran it back. Yeah. So like, hey, we're going back on the <laughs> real on, dude. I am done. I can't do this every day. There's no chance. That was that was one of the, of the fun stories that we had, and we always called each other like the Ghost Pepper Boys. Like That's that great. That, that all went out that night. I'd get that tatted on me, the Ghost Pepper Boys. I kind of like that. <laughs> I like that. It was that's, it was fun, dude. It that's was the name of Devin's new podcast. Moment, but <laughs> it was definitely makes a good story for sure. Yeah. For sure. Any, any uh, like in game stories that that might be like you know looking back like damn I can't believe that happened. Um, dude, probably my, it's that same day. Like one of my favorite stories I always tell everybody, just a testament to why Chris Sale is the man of all men. Mm -hmm. Um, so I hit the two home, like the game was like back and forth in the beginning, like the first four innings, the score was like six to five and we were just going like, they would score two, we would score three, they would score two. Like we just were going back and forth. And, you know, I hit the two homers and the game's like kind of getting out of hand. And, you know, and Chris Sale's done for the day. He's lined up to get the win. And he comes up to me on the bench, dude, and just like puts his arm around my shoulders. He goes, hey, what you did today was awesome, bro. Thanks for like picking me up. Like this day meant so much to me. And, you know, and just yeah. him like taking his time out, like to say that to me was, dude, I'll never forget that day to the day I died. Like it was, it was so dope. And that's awesome. Just like a fun just a fun day in total, man, that like a guy like that came up to me like a rookie and was like, Hey, thanks for having my back today. Dude. I, I needed it. It was so Superstar sick. Superstar too. Yeah. That's going to be amazing. That's, that's <clears throat> awesome. It's, I've never heard a bad story about him. I got to play with him for, with the White Sox and the Red Sox for a little bit, spring training, mm -hmm. but he's just an unbelievable guy. Yeah, dude. That guy is the man, bro. Like he's and quiet, disgusting. but when, like he's quiet around everyone else, but he, when he's around the boys, dude, he is, Awesome, dude. He is such a great dude. Oh, yeah. The my best, my only claim to fame with him was we faced him the first game of the Cape Cod. Uh -huh. Shook out the first 15 batters, right? First 15 or maybe 13, whatever it was. I, strikeout prone guy, was the first guy to not put the ball in play. I fouled out to the first baseman. Everybody was One ecstatic. Minute. <laughs> <laughs> I called my dad. I'm like, Dad, like, listen, this Cape stuff, they were right. Like, if I'm going to face that... I got, this is where it ends for me. Oh, <laughs> like it just happened. To, I didn't realize how good he was until yeah, might, like, he just did the, it the whole I'm time. I'm gonna try to head to the Cape. I don't sign in the next couple of weeks. So you're gonna go to the Cape and work out. Who would? What coach? With Coach Roberts. Oh, okay, gotcha. There in Katu, where I played. Yeah, so I'm probably go back there and just see my awesome host family that I had there and yeah, kick it for a couple of days are, and then work out and stuff and head back. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, the game that's plan. where that's where we met. We we met. Uh, well, ha well, we started in the Cape for like what, like, like a few weeks, and then we went to Team USA. 
Um, I met you at Team USA first. Okay. Because I was in I was in uh, the college, the college super regional, so it was oh, like okay. later on. And then I went straight. Other gyps flew from Austin straight to the Cape, and that's when we started our bromance. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun time, huh? Yeah. Dude, it was so much fun. Me, me Devin, and Strowman were the three amigos. Dude, these We'd be guys freestyling in the, in the back, back of the bus. Of the bus. Dude, dude, they, they, he can rap. Was, <laughs> he can rap. It was so much fun, dude. It, it dude, would be Stro, me, me, him, and Stro, Stro rapping. Stro's the real deal, bro. He's good, too, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously at baseball, but he was, yeah. he was pretty good freestyling. We'd be us three would be rapping, and then you know, Mark Appel would be like a few seats ahead of us Fuck. reading the Bible. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Locked in. All right, so let's let's end this with a nice. Devin and I are going to put a nice beat down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, that's great. No, it's great having you on, bro. And then, uh, yeah, whenever you're back in New York, let us know. We'll get you in the studio. For sure, um, bro. Check it out. I'll, it, I'll throw you flips, bro. I got it. What's that? I'll throw you flips. Let's do it. I cannot throw you BP though. It's it's. That's fine. We got mental. machines it, now. Yeah, it's oh, mental. Dude. BP it's, is so I, I can't. Bad. I can't. It's so bad. Michael, Michael be throwing me in the offseason. I've thrown him over LJ's head, like legit over, he, and trying my best. He throw he throw him really? down the middle, and he's Swear. like, I, I figured it out. And then the next one will be like behind me. I can only throw hard. I okay. can't. I can't throw light. Oh, and I hit a kid, I hit like a nine-year-old in the neck, like my first lesson. And then I saw the dad like three weeks later in Stop and Shop. And I was like, hey, how's, I don't even know his name, like Johnny. Yeah, Johnny's not playing baseball anymore. I'm like, oh. He's like, yeah, it just wasn't for him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't mean to hit him. He just doesn't like, like I didn't mean to hit him in the neck. neck. Oh, God. It was He's pretty bad. Kid, hey, probably best thing for the kid. You know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I look at it like that. It's, I'm a life. Probably going to be guy. president now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was gonna... All attributed to him smacking his neck. That's yeah. It. Ooh, that's so great. Oh, man. All right, bro. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, good luck this, this year. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be following you. Hope you get picked up soon. Damn right. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Hey, Devin, it was really great having you. We appreciate your time, and we'll see all you guys next week on the lineup with LJ and Mike.